네, 최근 이어지고 있는 시장의 급격한 변동성, 이에 함께 대비하기 위해서 이데일리 TV가 단독으로 스탠다드 차타드 그룹과 인터뷰를 진행을 했습니다. 레이먼드 총 스탠다드 차타드 그룹 부가시아 최고 투자 책임자와 함께 하반시, 하반기에 대한 증시 전략 함께 세워보도록 할 텐데요. 일단 지난주 글로벌 증시를 공포에 떨게 했던 미국의 경기 침체, 앞으로 정말 올 것인지, 그리고 현재 상황에서 연준은 어떤 태도를 취해야 되는지, 그에 대한 명쾌한 해답 만나보도록 하겠습니다. Thanks for having me, by the way. Uh, um, in terms of assessing um, the probability of a U.S. recession, um, we, we think um, um, over the next 12 months, we continue to view the U.S. economy shift into a soft landing mode. Um, and in terms of um, a recession, uh, we only set it as a probability of 20%. So in other words, our base case remains the fact that the growth will slow, albeit um, remaining at a positive uh, level. And uh, we expect GDP to grow at around 2% in the U.S., decelerating from 2.5% a year ago. Now, um, the reason why we continue to think that GDP growth will stay positive uh, is partly because of our continued solid uh, consumer sentiment. But of course, uh, lately, the economic data points, um, including uh, non-farm payroll numbers, challenge our view, right? Um, if we look at uh, the non-farm payroll, it seems like new job growth decelerated quite notably from 179,000 in the month of June to just about 114,000 in the month of July. And worse still, unemployment rate also rose quite notably to 4.3%. But when we um, dig into the numbers in details, we realize that um, the pickup in unemployment rate was partly to do with the increased uh, participation rate um, from the labor front. In other words, labor supply has increased, which caused unemployment rate to go higher. And it wasn't because of a, a decline in demand. So that's why we are not as concerned about a recession imminent at this juncture. But of course, we will remain watchful of the upcoming high frequency job numbers and also um, uh, uh, the, the, the consumer sentiment to gauge if um, the economic conditions worsen further um, uh, from here on. Um, in terms of uh, gauging whether the Fed rate cut uh, would be a sizable one for the remainder of the year, right? Uh, let's share our base case first. Uh, we believe that the rate cuts for the remainder of the year would be about 50 basis points. Okay. I know this is a bit more conservative than the market expectation, and that's partly to reflect our concern that the other side of the equation the Fed is also paying very uh, uh, big emphasis on is to battle the inflation war. Right. So if inflation in the U.S. remains elevated and persistently higher than the target level of 2%, that would limit the capacity for the Fed to reduce rates at a much faster pace than hoped for by the market. 네, 그렇다면 최근 시장에 나왔었던 과도한 변동성, 말 그대로 과도했던 것일까요? 그리고 현재 시장에서는 우리가 어떤 섹터를 주요 섹터로 생각하고 투자를 이어가면 좋을지 이에 대한 해답도 만나보겠습니다. Sure, it's a very important question here. Um, as I shared earlier on, um, um, Standard Charter um, CIO team ascribed the probability of a, a recession in the U.S. to happen in the next 12 months at just around 20 percent. Okay, um, so in other words, this is not our base case. Um, so um, at the outset, it seems like the recent market correction uh, was a bit of an overreaction. But um, we are cognizant of the fact that uh, the latest uh, uh, slump in uh, stock market uh, was magnified to a certain degree by the crowded positioning of some of the popular sectors, such as uh, the U.S. mega cap technology sector, and also uh, crowded positioning in Japan equities, partly because of the carry trade. So in other words, as yen uh, appreciated notably over the past few trading sections, that caused an unwind of um, those carry trades. And so that magnified um, uh, the correction here. So um, right now at, at this juncture, we think that um, um, 
fundamentally, the three-month outlook uh, for, for the uh, US dollar against yen uh, would be at around 145, 146 level. So um, we, we think that um, uh, there uh, has been some um, overreaction in terms of the currency move. But of course, uh, near term volatility could still persist depending on how the economic data uh, 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 would turn out to be in both the US and also in Japan. And in terms of uh, sector rotation, which is the second half of the question, um, we have been advocating over the past couple of months the importance of diversification, um, not only across sectors, but also across geographic markets. So um, let's start off with um, uh, geographic markets, right? Um, we continue to like the US as uh, one of the, the, the major uh, geographies, but we also emph emphasize the need to diversify, especially given the fact that um, a lot of the positioning in the US has been concentrated in the tech space. So we have been also advocating an overweight in India uh, as a way to uh, hedge um, some of the potential volatility in the US. Sector-wise, um, we, we may overweight on um, US technology in the medium to longer term. But in the near term, um, we, we think that um, uh, the earnings positive surprises um, have um, stayed positive, albeit at a lesser degree than um, uh, what we hope for. Um, and instead, we see actually bigger positive earnings surprises in some of the traditional sectors, such as financials. So um, over the past couple of weeks, we have um, been recommending uh, some shift of the uh, allocations from US technology into um, traditional um, uh, areas such as financials as well. And going forward, we think that um, uh, we continue to advocate this uh, diversification to maintain a barbell strategy between growth industries as well as some of the more defensive uh, resilient um, industry groups. 네, 성장주와 방어주에 비중 있는 포트폴리오 잘 챙겨가자라는 부분 확인을 해봤고요. 그렇다면 최근 증시의 또 하나의 변동성의 한 축을 담당했던 대선 리스크와 관련된 투자 부분도 짚어봐야 될것 같습니다. 주말 사이 해리스 부통령이 트럼프 대통령의 여론조사 결과 이 투표를 이기고 있다라는 포인트도 확인을 해봤는데요. 우리가 승리할 수 있는 대선 후보별 투자 방법은 어떤 게 있을까요? 바로 만나보시죠. Oh, it's a very tough question here, um, especially since uh, Vice President Harris uh, took over um, um, uh, Biden as the Democrat um, uh, presidential candidate, um, the race against Trump uh, has become a, a lot tighter. So in other words, uh, um, a lot of the benefits from the Trump trade uh, that have been priced in earlier on uh, are now fading. Now, let, let's start off with the Trump trades, right? Um, uh, a lot of the people had anticipated that uh, should Trump become the president, it would actually uh, bode well for US equities because uh, Trump's uh, policy mandates have been to advocate America first um, and also extend tax rate cuts um, for uh, US households and corporates. So um, a lot of the small cap um, areas, uh, as well as uh, financials and energy that potentially could benefit uh, from his push for uh, deregulation um, have done well. Um, but uh, since Harris um, uh, became part of this picture, um, we, we felt that um, um, we still cannot remove the possibility that Trump could become the president, but um, the Senate and the House uh, within the U.S. could be a bit more divided. Um, that um, would still give Trump uh, the chance to leverage the executive order to actually uh, uh, pass the policy agenda that he has in mind. So in other words, some of the uh, policies such as tariffs uh, could still be implemented uh, should he uh, use the executive order. So um, that remains to be seen. And if that happens, um, so uh, a uh, under the scenario where Trump becomes the president while we have a divided um, House and Senate, um, the non-U.S. equities could still be a victim um, should tariffs be imposed, uh, especially uh, in markets such as China, right? Um, and on the other hand, uh, we, we think that um, uh, some of the um, uh, traditional sectors could still benefit should he uh, uh, 
push through some of the deregulations. Um, on the other hand, uh, which is the other extreme, if uh, Vice President Harris becomes the president, uh, of course, um, uh, uh, status quo uh, seem to be uh, answering uh, uh, the most part of this question. But uh, we, we, we do think that um, uh, within um, the, the, the uh, traditional industry groups, some of them could get hurt. Um, for instance, uh, financials um, as well as uh, uh, energy um, could uh, get hurt because um, uh, there's no longer a push for deregulation. And of course, Bitcoin could also be less popular because Trump uh, has uh, become very friendly uh, with Bitcoin and crypto in general. Uh, we, so that's why we think that it's quite important to uh, pay attention to the composition of, of the House and the Senate uh, beyond uh, just who will become the next U.S. president. Now, but all in all, regardless of the election outcome, uh, we think that across all the asset classes, gold will likely be the clear winner because uh, now we are talking about increased political uncertainty even within the U.S. itself. So in other words, uh, diversification across sectors and across geographies and even across asset classes, uh, which is uh, bonds, equities, as well as commodities, uh, will be very important to um, uh, making sure that uh, we build a, a strong all-weather foundation portfolio. 네, 그럼 마지막으로 한국 투자자들, 특히 반도체 섹터에 관심 있는 투자자들을 위한 조언까지 만나보겠습니다. Yeah, uh, we are long-term positive on uh, technology, um, including um, the U.S. tech, and within um, the technology space, um, we. Uh, actually like sem semiconductors a lot, despite the fact that, um, uh, that there have been some um, uh, mixed uh, reactions post-earnings season um, for some of the uh, U.S. AI-related names. Like the rationale is as below. Like basically, um, as we look at a lot of the hyperscalers um, and that we are talking about the platform players um, like uh, uh, Alphabet um, and Microsoft uh, that uh, continue to pour a lot of CapEx spending on AI infrastructures as well as AI chips. And the, the, the motivation behind is that they wanted to uh, upgrade their, their service Surface offering um, increase the processing power, uh, where doing themselves for uh, more advanced AI related uh, products. And uh, we think that this is not um, ending at all. If anything, it's uh, accelerating. The only uh, uh, potential area of disappointment that has happened is that these uh, hyperscalers um, have not been able to show um, in a very evident way that. Um, they, they have extracted incremental benefits from uh, these incremental dollars that they invested into AI. So um, from a, a fundamental standpoint, we think that uh, semiconductors um, are a very important upstream part of the AI spectrum. And when these uh, hyperscalers on the downstream uh, continue to add to CapEx spending on AI infrastructure, on AI chips, these are um, uh, incremental benefits to the upstream players, um, including the semiconductor um, industry. So we think that um, um, their earnings outlook uh, within the se um, semiconductor space, especially those players um, uh, targeting uh, AI-specific uh, chips uh, and or related equipment, uh, will benefit from this multi-year uh, uh, capex uptrend. So um, we think that fundamentally, this is a structural growth driver that will persist um, uh, regardless of how uh, the economic conditions unfold. So um, we, we would recommend buying on dips um, into some of the quality uh, semiconductor uh, chip players and or equipment players. Uh, but of course, uh, um, uh, how we would position would also to a, a large degree uh, depend on the positioning as well. In other words, uh, should certain name uh, experience very crowded positioning, uh, we need to be mindful of that and pace our exposures accordingly. 
네, 지난주 하반기에 첫 주를 보냈던 글로벌 증시 어느 때보다도 쉽지 않은 한 주를 보냈습니다. 남은 하반기 변동성에 잘 대응하기 위해서 또 남은 하반기 성공적인 투자 전략을 다시 한번 점검해 봤는데요. 지금까지 스탠다드 차타드 레이먼드 청 최고 투자 책임 전략과와 함께 단독으로 내용 점검해 봤습니다.